Hello, this is Paul from Dickybird Studio. Today I want to talk about how we can speed up uh, Beaver Builder and WP Admin Area for when you're working on your website. So sometimes you'll be working on local hosts and you won't have this problem, but if you are working on a live client site or a staging server, a staging area, or um, or you work on a on a cloud server when you're developing, like we do, then you will want the WordPress admin area to be as fast as possible and also to be uh, for Beaver Builder or Elementor or whatever it is that you use, in our case it's Beaver Builder, to be as quick as possible when you're editing. Um, what we've found is that it can the, the quicker that we can edit things uh, in this view, the quicker we can get jobs done and the less the less time we spend with little pauses in between every single action so we can click and we can edit and then we're done and we save you know whether we're, work, whether we're using the the beaver builder editor itself or whether we're using um, one of the other ones we use is the wallace inline editor which is absolutely amazing this one um, so you can just click on different things and edit them but the on some of our client servers we have quite a lot of delay when we're editing stuff so we, we're done and we press publish and etc and we're done and we're just waiting and waiting and there's this really irritating pause so what's wrong with that see look at that so let's let's change that then apparently that needs a hyphen and this is fine this is add to dictionary that's us okay cool that's one thing that's really cool, just to um, go off on a different tangent there, that's one thing that's really cool about this inline editing is that as as a result of this, my Grammarly picks up typos on the front end. So what's wrong with that? He oversees the creation. Yeah, there you go. How cool is this front end editing? So the creation. Done. And you can see how quick it is. And also, um, my this will probably let me down now if we go into the back end and we click in here and we click around pages etc uh, theme of pro pages blah 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 dashboard etc um, everything's really quick and there's no plugin doing this or anything this is the server that we're using so in our case and what i wanted to talk about today was um, Moving up from, for instance, shared hosting, for instance, we used to host with um, SiteGround. Uh, we've still got an account with them on GoGeek, which is their most powerful shared platform. And then we tried WP Engine and we've tried Flywheel and then we tried Cloudways. There's no uh, affiliate link in this uh, video whatsoever. I just I'm sure I'll do that at some point. I haven't got around to doing that, but at this point, I just want to talk about the the bonus that you get from a workflow point of view of having a more powerful server. Um, in Cloudways' uh, case, it's a VPS. I think that Flywheel is a VPS because that's quite fast as well. But WP Engine is actually a shared platform. It's just a very clever shared platform. And SiteGround, their shared platform, I've seen is a shared shared system and as we, and they've got what SiteGround have done really well is made a system that caches amazingly fast on the front end so your website loads really fast on the front end most of the time but in the back end it can be excruciatingly slow and I migrated a site from my SiteGround account uh, to Cloudways just this week and it massively sped things up because a client was asking me to change something and I was trying to change it and I was so frustrated with the speed that I thought I'm I'm moving this I'm moving this before I carry on it's just too it's just too boring watching this thing spin around waiting to load click wait click wait and so anyway the difference between shared hosting and something like Cloudways is Cloudways is uh, VPS and you can put as much power in that as you want. You can have a really powerful thing with lots of CPU cores and all that kind of stuff. Um, or you can have a fairly cheap one. Um, we go with the fairly cheap ones and they're really powerful for what you pay. So there's the problem. You've got a slow Beaver Builder. You've got a slow WP Admin. Um, you've got frustration for you and your clients. And then if you're on, you know, a particular host that does monitor CPU, I'm not going to name any names, 
but the CPU police come along sometimes and they send you a not very nice email on their shared platform and they say that you need to upgrade to their cloud platform and that maybe some of the plugins that you are using are not suitable for a shared platform. And it feels like a bit of a sales pitch. And then what they do as well is that your um, service will be kind of unlimited power until you fix the problem. In our case, when that happened on two occasions, all we did was update a plugin and something went wrong and something looped and it spiked the CPU and then we had three days of all our client sites going extremely slow, spiking CPU, getting turned off. And then after the second time that happened, we just decided enough was enough and decided to move away from that platform. No names. Uh, so anyway, uh, WP Engine, they were great. Uh, they've just hiked their prices quite a lot, so we can't really afford them now. Uh, Flywheel were pretty good. They gave some amazing swag. I've got a brilliant Flywheel t-shirt. I've got some Flywheel sunglasses. Uh, the only problem is I'm based in the UK and their support hours are not UK support hours so it's just not ideal for me so we'll be kind of moving away from flywheel probably um, but they didn't do anything wrong they just were in the wrong they just they don't um, support the UK hours as, as I need them to so along came cloudways on and we, we've been using them for now for, for just under a year and we've got a whole bunch of servers with them and they are just awesome. I don't think you would get the the support level that you would get with SiteGround or WP Engine in that those those two companies' support will help you with your WordPress install issues and stuff like that. So if that is something that's really crucial to you, then bear that in mind. I've not had to contact um, Cloudway support yet in, in almost a year, so I don't know how good they are at that. I've heard mixed reports, but what I need is super fast fret website on the front end. My Cloudway sites outperform my own my old site ground sites on the front end, uh, which I was amazed at. Uh, they also outperform all the WP Engine sites that I've ever had, and they outperform all the Flywheel sites uh, easily in those two cases. Um, just as a quick one, one to four in speed. Cloudway is number one. Uh, SiteGround were number two because of their front-end caching, WP Engine were number three, and finally Flywheel came in at number four for, for us, moving around because we've pretty much moved our main website uh, from one platform to another, and then we kind of can see the different changes as we do that on the different sites. So anyway, that's the problem, slow everything, especially the back-end. So the front-end's fast, but the back-end's slow. So the solution is more power. Um, the problem with that solution for a lot of people is that more power comes with an assumption that this is going to cost more money and that more expertise is needed. And I can totally understand why that would be the case. Um, so what I wanted to do today, because I need to buy a new Cloudways server and I also need to show uh, one of our new team members how to um, duplicate a site on the server and also install a new one. So I thought I'd share that with everybody as well at the same time. So, Cloudways, people hear about it and the assumption is that it's expensive and that it's that yes, it's powerful, uh, but it's going to be difficult to use because it's all this high-tech VPS stuff. And what I wanted to say today was that it's not expensive, not, not expensive, it is powerful, and it's actually easier to use than cPanel. So whenever I go into any of my cPanel sites, I... I'm confronted with a million icons. It's a slight exaggeration. Let's say 35 icons. And in each of those areas is a different user interface because it's a whole bunch of different modules that have been thrown together for cPanel. And cPanel itself uses up a lot of CPU and power and space from what I understand. So it's not expensive, it's not difficult, and it's super powerful. And I wanted to show you today how that works because I think a lot of people's barriers to moving out of shared hosting is the comfort zone. So let's do this. So anyway, let's first of all, we will go into Cloudways. Here are my existing servers. You can see I've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, one of the cool things with Cloudways is you can name your servers. So you can see that um, these are my WP Blueprint servers and with our Dikibears agency starting up again this year, we've started adding agents um, servers called Dikibears as well. Um, you can see that all my, this is my US server. So it's based in New York and this is for our US uh, based clients of which we've got a few now. Um, and we 
are naming the the Dicky Birds uh, servers after Battlestar Galactica characters. Um, we're naming the um, the WP Blueprint servers after Star Wars characters. So that's the kind of cool guy I am. Anyway, so we need to create a new server. It's going to be a Dicky Birds server. So I guess it needs to have a name based on uh, a Battlestar Galactica character. So I need to think of one. Well, it's going to be Apollo, I assume. So anyway, we all we do, we go in here and we click on Add Server. So I'm buying a server now. I'm buying a cloud server. So let's buy a server. We click on Add Server. Then we get to choose who we want to have our server with. So but the first thing you have to do is you just have to choose an application. So a server needs some kind of application when you buy it to, to set it up. So you can just choose clean WordPress there like that. You give your your um, app a name. So I'm going to call this Dicky Birds, Dicky Birds Starter Starter uh, Starter One or something like that. I don't like the one. DickyBirds base, that'll do. Name your managed server. So it's going to be called DickyBirds Apollo. I spell Apollo. Apollo BSG. Did I mean A P O W -L, L? Yes. Okay, so we want to call it A P O W -L, L O Apollo. So now we've got Starbuck and we've got Apollo. Our project is a starter site. So the thing about this project thing here in, in Cloudware is you can categorize all your sites. So you've got debugging, starter sites, development, production, to migrate, uh, generate press sites. For instance, that's where I'm putting my um, sites that I do with the generate press sites project. And then I need to choose a server. So this is a, this is a point. I need to make a decision here, actually. So um, I'm going to go with Volta or Vulture, whatever it's called, because I think they are just brilliant. They're so it's such it's so fast. I would like to try Linode. It just costs a little bit more money. DigitalOcean are really good as well, um, but I really like the Vulture server. So I'm going to go with their cheapest one, which is one gig, which is the usual ones that I go with, and I'm going to choose where I want my server to be. Oh look, that's a problem. Look, EU London temporarily not available to buy. So in that case, I'm not bothered. I'm just going to go and use DigitalOcean instead. And there we go. So I can choose my location. So I'm going to go with London. If I wanted to later on, I can just shut down this server, move everything over to a Vulture server. But I've got a mix of DigitalOcean and Vulture. And do you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to buy a Linode server. I've always wanted to have a Linode server. And it cost me an extra $2 a month from DigitalOcean, I think. But I want to give it a go because I hear that they are awesome and super fast. So let's go with a Linode server so I can be with the cool kids. And that's it. I've chosen that. We say launch now. OK, so this is going to be ready in five minutes. So I'm just going to press. I'm going to leave that to go for a minute. I'm just going to talk through something else that um, I'm going to do in a minute. So let's leave that running. And I'll pause it in a minute as well. Now, there's a couple of things you need to know about um, when you're using something like Cloudways is that let's say you're using something like SiteGround or WP Engine or Flywheel, you can use their own server to send emails. With any of the, the uh, Cloudways servers, it, they, they're just servers, they're web servers. That's what they're, they're fully geared to just delivering your website super fast and super secure um, in a kind of containerized platform. So if you want your website to be able to do things like reset password or send orders or contact forms or anything to do with email, you have to do something a little bit extra. And this is where a lot of people, again, kind of get a little bit worried about the technical aspect because you would need to set something else up. So I use uh, Mailgun. And what I did was I bought this domain here, cloudsend.email, and I created a subdomain for it. And it's it's not difficult to do. All the tutorials are out there, and I can probably do one as well. And you create your uh, domain in Mailgun, set it all up. You follow the instructions so that all your DNS records are verified. So it's basically just a case of creating these DNS records here. And then and once you've done that, you will be able to send from this domain. 
So in some of your client situations, they might want to send from their own domain. So you would maybe set up a subdomain for their domain uh, so that your so that the emails could come um, legitimately from their domain. But most of the time, um, a contact form is sending to the client itself or you or a reset password. It doesn't really matter where the email comes from. And so that's why we bought we bought this domain, which is kind of like a generic white label domain that so if you if you get an email from the site and it says it's delivered by cloudsend.email you're going to think that that sounds legit so that's fine so anyway once you set it all up you get these these details here and we'll come back to that in a minute uh, once our server has been set up so you can see it's still in the process of setting up but very soon it's going to be there Okay, a new server is created. It just had a little announcement up here, and here is our brand new server from Linode. So you can see here's my different uh, servers. I've got one, two, three, uh, Vulture, two, DigitalOcean, and a brand new Linode server. So basically, we've just bought a server. That's going to bill me at the end of the month, I think, and it's costing me $12 a month um, for the same, more or less the same DigitalOcean is nine dollars a month or ten I can't remember exactly what it is and Vulture is eleven dollars a month so they're all more or less the same kind of price you can do some online uh, online uh, comparisons and each of them has its merits and pros and cons etc um, I really like Vulture so I'm trying Linode for the first time now so by default, it's already installed for us one application. So here we are clicking into the server. You've got all these different details down here, which seem kind of scary at first. Then you can click on here and you can see the different um, applications you've got. So I've, it's already installed for me a WordPress application and I can click on it. And here it is. It's a WordPress install. The details to access it are right here. So I've got username, I can click to copy, I can click to copy the password. So I find that really, really useful because I can just click to open the site. I can then go to WP admin. As usual, I can type admin. Okay, I'll copy the password, paste it there, log in, and I'm in and it's mega super fast in here so I don't want to save that right I don't actually need this this application here so but while we're here we may as well have a quick look around we've got the WordPress admin panel details that it gives you here um, this is your application URL you can set up SFTP uh, very easily you've got the MySQL access like PHP my admin when you click into here you've got domain management so I'm going to show you something now which is I'm going to prep this site, which is currently when I click it on the Cloudways domain here. Uh, I want to prep this site so it's pretend, so this is going to be a uh, example client site um, that we would start doing. So I'm just going to call it test for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is going to map a domain to to this server really really quick. So I'm going to log into my Hover account, Hover.com. Should log me in. Here we go, log in, hopefully that's correct. Yep, my account, domains. I'm gonna use the dopecreative.io, which is like a, again, like a generic domain that isn't doesn't represent any um, particular company. So I can use it for client work and white label work that we do. Go to DNS, click add record, test. And what I need is the IP address of the server. And so that is in here, access details. Click to copy, so that was easy paste that, add record, and that is done. So that with my hover account, which I really like my hover account, tends to happen almost instantly. So unless I've already done used that one before, no, there we go. So I'm going to go into my domain section here now and just map a domain. So I'm going to basically say test.dickybirds. Uh, dot Test.dickybirds. No, it's not that, is it? Dopey, I knew there was something wrong. Dopeycreative.io. Save changes. Okay, we'll just wait for that to update. And then once that's done, we can also set an SSL certificate in here, which is nice and easy. Now, in this example, I'm not 
what I normally do is um, have the SSL site have a site that's on my Cloudways account and duplicate it and that duplicates it with SSL in place um, in this case I haven't got that set up in already so you can see that's done now so in theory if the DNS has already happened which sometimes with hover it already has I can click this let's see and it's already you can see using test.wpcreative.io so that's so quick isn't it how that happens now have we got a um, let's see we've got a page where's search on this I don't even know how to use WordPress anymore <laughs> So anyway, the next thing I want to do is set up SSL. So I'm going to go to SSL certificate. I'm going to grab that there. This is really easy. You can have as many uh, SSL certif certificates as you want. Studio. Oh, uh. Install a certificate. That takes a couple of seconds. And then what I can do is log into this site of the admin and I can go to the access details but I can't I've got to wait for the SSL thing to, to stop so let's just wait for a couple of seconds for that to happen I wonder if it's remembered no it won't have because the domain name has changed just while we're here, this is the application, this is the server view, and then this is the applications view. So you can click on applications and you can see all your different apps. So by an app, that's a WordPress install and it's totally containerized as well. So, and also you've got your projects, so you can click on a uh, starter sites, for instance, and you can see down here the sites that are clustered starter sites and you can click on uh, generate press sites, for instance, you can see I've clustered those all on the Starbucks server. Um, so back to servers, let's just see, it's still doing the SSL, that will be done any moment now. Sometimes you can see it's already done, so if we were to go to readme.html and then add HTTPS, it's not there yet, but it will be any minute now. I'll pause it just for the next 20 seconds. And about five seconds later, it was done. So as a result of that, now we can log into the WordPress site, WP Admin, and I'll just go and grab from the application details. Where are we? Applications. It's going to be the one right at the bottom, probably. There it is, Dicky Bird's base. Click on that. Grab my password. Copy. Log in. Okay, excellent. Um, not now. I can quickly install the SSL plugin. SSL. This is not the way I normally do it, actually, because I not like I say I normally duplicate one of my sites that's already got SSL without the plugin implemented. Go ahead. Yeah, that's cool. And apparently that's done. So look and now our site is in SSL so that was super easy we hardly had any screens to worry about in fact look these are the only tabs that we've got and you pretty much only go in access details domain management and SSL certificate I'm hardly ever in any of these other um, areas I'm just gonna say one thing if we go into servers and we click on the Apollo server one thing you always want to do if you're using things like Beaver Builder is turn off something called varnish which is a caching system uh, let's just see if it's in here somewhere where is varnish I always need to remember where that is it should be to it might be somewhere else manage services varnish okay I want to disable varnish because you have all sorts of weird caching issues with things like page builders that, that anything that's building its own cache so I've turned off varnish so I'm not going to have problems now uh, it it doesn't really slow the site down hardly at all um, it's still mega mega fast so anyway what we've done is in, we've installed WordPress and here we go we're ready to go to build our site now the other thing that I wanted to show you was the email setup so if I log in yep got that wrong so let's uh, get to our application again get down to the bottom dig the base copy my password so the, the reason I have to keep doing this is because 
uh, because my my last pass knows WP Creative as a subdomain and it keeps thinking that the password is from a different site. So no, 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 no. So anyway, so plugins. I need to install a plugin. Now I like I say I use um, Mailgun for this, but there are all sorts of solutions that you can use. So I use Mailgun. So I installed a Mailgun plugin. Where is it? Is it this one? Nope. It's this one. Install. And then activate. And then I can go to settings, Mailgun. And I need my domain name. So I can now pop into my Mailgun area. And my domain name is this. Pop that in there. I need an API key. It's probably this one. Has it got a 65 on the end? Yeah, there it is. There it is. So, you know, your browser remembers it most of the time. Uh, the from address, I'll just say this is from uh, port, like no reply or something. No reply at um, cloud send dot email from Paul or whatever. It's, or no reply, whatever. whatever I don't really know. Uh, no reply. Uh, I think that's done. Save changes. And so with the domain there and the API key, if we press test configuration and it says it's success, it means that it's just sent me an email. Now what that means is that if you've got contact forms on there or if you've got um, anything else, you know, any other kind of system that sends emails, then they're going to go through the Mailgun system. Um, if I go to my domains, let's see if I've got one. This one here maybe. You can check to see in the logs. Probably nothing's. I'm not using this domain, but basically, if you your site has sent you know an order or a contact form or something like that, you can see in Mailgun exactly if it has sent or not, which is super super useful. Um, because otherwise, if you're just using you know SiteGround or WP Engine or Flywheel's own email system, you've got no log of whether or not that actually sent or not. So that's a whole other thing because a lot of people have problems with contact forms on websites, especially when a domain is sending to its own domain, like info at info.com sending to uh, <laughs> sending to info at info.com for instance. Okay, so back in here, this website is now ready for us to develop, uh, but here's another cool thing that you can do with Cloudways. So what we do is we have a site that is ready for us to duplicate and it is this one starter dicky birds this site is basically nothing if I click on it it's just an empty install of WordPress uh, but we have in here our most used used plugins and some of the scripts already installed in there so let's take a look. Here's a bunch of plugins that we use. And I'm going to duplicate this because this is the starting situation that we use for almost all our sites. By the time we launch a live site, we probably get rid of half of these plugins, especially things like Faker Press and Instant Images, which are just used to help us build the site and design the site. Uh, for instance, oh, yep, so Convert Pro, we're not using this one anymore. So we will deactivate that one. I don't need to put that in on the next site. Convert Pro, delete. And we'll delete the add-on as well because we don't need that either. We're using a cloud-based uh, plug not plugin, cloud-based system now for our lead gen forms. Um, it's better that we can do that with our GDPR uh, requirements and also with, I think that moving some things to the cloud is a is a good idea with the how the future's looking in general. Um, so here's our here's our um, base plugins. You can see this site is already on on HTTPS. So I'm going to set up a site now for an actual project. What I'm going to do is go into our list of applications. I'm going to find that site, which is Dicky Birds Starter Dicky Birds. I'm going to go clone app, and I choose my server, and I say Dicky Birds Apollo, the brand new server that I bought just a few minutes ago, and press submit. Okay, it's now going to clone this site and put a copy of that on our um, new Linode server ready for us to use. 
And while that's doing that, I'm going to set up another domain that we can use to build this site. So if I go to here, I'm going to add a new record and let's say uh, CT and then the IP address of our Linode server. Let's go and grab that is here. Can I grab that copy 178? Yep. Add that record. Okay, now I still need to wait for this to finish because look, you can see what it's doing. It's taking a backup from my Vader server, which is where the DickyBirds um, start. At, well, our, our kind of base, DickyBirds base theme is is originally there with the one with all the plugins on, and it's making a copy of that and cloning it to our DickyBirds Apollo server. So soon we'll have two applications on our DickyBirds Apollo server. Now this is so nice to manage your sites. And like I say, the main benefit of this is the performance that you get. Uh, I, if you're making a lot of sites and you're using a shared shared environment and you're working in WP Admin or working in Viva Builder quite a lot, you're going to be losing so much time to waiting around for things loading all the time. Um, so this is why I think it's worth the effort to make that step if you haven't already to move to cloud VPS hosting and like I say, Cloudways is the one I'll go. I've got no affiliation with Cloudways whatsoever. Um, I must have a t-shirt or some kind of swag for every... I've got SiteGround socks. I love those. I was really sad when one pair wore out the other day. Um, even though I'm not a massive fan of the hosting company, I love my SiteGround socks. I've got a brilliant flywheel t-shirt. One of my favorite t-shirts. I've finally got a WP Engine t-shirt. I've been after one of those for ages and I got one at WordCamp. Um, I've asked Cloudways to create some swag and told them that this is how you get customers because that's how Flywheel got me. They phoned me up and they sweet talk it, talked me into giving me two t-shirts, some sunglasses and that was it. Almost a thousand dollars later and I got my little package for the post. I'm very cheap. I'm easy to buy. So here we go. Apollo, it's duplicating that at the moment. We've set up the domain in readiness and as soon as that's ready, we're good to go. So let's just take a quick look. Okay, I've been away for a couple of minutes and it's done. So now if I go into my servers, there's a number where I can just go into applications, but I'm, I'm already in servers. You can see I've got two applications here now. I can also go into projects and go into development and say that on this Linode server, the uh, clone starter DickyBirds, which is what it called itself by now, is a is a development project so it's good for me to just tag those just for my own organization so I can see for instance how many sites I've got as development projects and how many of them are live projects for instance by dropping down that down to production and that will show me the live ones that I've got. Um, by the way just out, of in, just out of interest a lot of people want to know well, how many sites can I put on um, on a the you know one of the lowest package cloudways and the average people seem to be saying is around 6 to 12 uh, low traffic sites you can scale up one of your servers at any point look if you need more power you can just go to your servers uh, click on Apollo for instance the one we just bought click on vertical scaling and you can drag this up and suddenly that is it you've literally just created something with massive power don't click that because it's going to cost me an, an absolute fortune you can see that that's like but if your client needed a million hits on one day you could just say, Do you know what, let's just give it 24 gig for a day. And you can just pay by that time. And when you're done, scale it back down to normal time. So this is really, really useful because we're doing some websites for, um, we've got one that are really high profile um, TV, UK TV uh, celebrity that we've, we've done a blog for. And they have spikes on certain days of the week when this TV show is shown and we know when that TV show is shown and one of our well they've got access to the server all they do is they just drag it up to there and then after the, after the after it's all calm down they just drag it back down and it only costs them for the hours that they used used that service which is amazing so anyway back to the site uh, let's go to the server Let's go to the application called Cloned Starter Dicky Birds, and I'm going to change its name to uh, CT. Oh, I need three CT Dev. There we go, CT Dev. 
he did at least three characters. Okay, and currently the domain name is this, so the next thing I want to do is change the, the core domain to ct.dopcreative.io, I think that was correct, save the changes, wait for a moment for that to happen. The next thing I need to do is create an SSL certificate, which I can't until this has happened. So I've got to wait for that to finish first, which will only take a minute or two. While, I'm, while that's happening, there's another tab that I want to show you. It's my Manage WP account. So if we just find the Dicky Birds, where is it? Dicky Birds Studio, not that one. Dicky Birds, Dicky Birds. Data. There we go. This is the one we've cloned. Now I've got this in my Manage WP account. You might use Main WP or something like that. If you don't, basically Manage WP, Main WP, and these kind of tools are your dashboard for managing all your um, sites. So, for instance, this is where I can update or keep all the all the plugins updated and the WordPress updated for all my different sites. Um, so I keep my starter site connected up to Manage WP so that it's always got the latest plugins, plugin versions, and WordPress plugin version. WordPress in version installed and that way I whenever I duplicate it in Cloudways I know that it's already up to date with all the plugins and stuff so look we can see this one is now cloned and been updated so we can click into our application again and this time I want to set up SSL I'm in the wrong area so servers and applications are the main two places you go Dicky Birds base that's not it it's ct dev ssl certificate so let's just grab that domain that i created this one here ssl certificate paul at dickybirds.studio pop that in there install the certificate wait a couple of moments I need to remember what the password is for this particular one as well. So it's cloning this starter DickyBirds one, so when that's done, I will have basically on my new dev domain for the project uh, that we're starting, um, an exact duplicate of this ready to go with all the plugins that I like to have. So I can go into dashboard, how's that going? Oh, that's done. So last job, domain, I think we're already done actually. Let's click on here. And this is where it will all go wrong because I've probably forgotten one step. So let's see, click. Okay. And we're in SSL with our subdomain on Cloudways on a super fast um, site. Let's see if I can remember the login. I probably can't. Right, that won't be it. That's not going to be it. But let's just see. Let's see, applications. CT dev. If this works, I'll be shocked. I don't think this will be it, but let's see. Nope, I didn't think so. Let's try one more. One more. Let's try the Dickbird's base. Don't think it's this either. It's definitely not that one. One moment. And I'm back and I'm logged in. I remembered what the login was now, finally. I can see that I've also got an issue here with the SSL, so I'm not exactly sure what that is, but don't worry about that for now. Um, I'm just going to go into, I've got Beaver Builder, so let's see if we can just quickly see how quick the back end of this now is. So let's click on Beaver Builder. And no thanks. Click. Yep, cancel. Let's go plus. Let's now drag that in. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, done. Publish and that is super fast so impressed with Linode and Cloudways and that is basically means that while we're developing our site in the cloud um, everything is going to feel as fast as if we were using local host but we are ready to preview the site to our clients and work on it collaboratively across the team um, so that is one of my top tips for how to make save a lot of time every day on your sites by switching to a much more powerful host that has got power on the front end with the caching and also most importantly has power in the back end. If anyone's got any questions just 
uh, shoot me a message, I'll be happy to answer. Like I said, there is no disclaimer needed here. I've got no affiliation to any of any of you know to Cloudways or anything like that at all. They didn't even send me any swag yet. I really want a Cloudways t-shirt if anyone is listening. I just don't know if Cloudways t-shirts exist yet, but they should because I think I would wear it all the time along with my Beaver Builder cap, my flywheel sunglasses and my sight ground socks. That's that's how we're rolling WordPress, isn't it? Anyway, until next time, hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers. Bye-bye.